Hey there, Beer Tube. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Starr. Got a good show for you here, I at least I hope, tonight, uh, even though we have Greg on it. Um, we've got... Uh, That's rude. Yep, a great uh, Belgian classic in the form of St. Bernardus Abbott 12 from Watu, Belgium. But uh, we've got a couple of people on here on the panel tonight that haven't been here in a while. First and foremost being, of course, uh, Mr. Beer Patrol himself, Average Joe. How are you tonight? I appreciate Put your you uniform lifting. on. All right, Greg. Uh, just I'm not going to have to kick off. He's going to be like that. Yeah, and I appreciate you lifting the band on my appearance on the show finally. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't me that had the band. It was Greg. Oh, well, that makes oh, it worse. Beer burglar. It was, now the Dark Ages are finally over. And uh, moving right along over to the uh, the second person on this panel, which I know has already opened the beer. We got to Mr. Ashley Sexton, who's not last tonight. Woo! Oh, my God. I feel like a rock star. Yeah, you're actually showing up as number two tonight. So how are you anyway? I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. We are uh, five days into December. I got uh, 19 more to go. Mm. Retail Christmas. Cheers. Fun. I don't miss retail at Christmas time at all. And another person we do we uh well we we don't see him every week, but it's nice to see him anyway. Mr. Craig of Kent Beer Reviews, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, all good. Um, didn't think I was going to be able to pick this up for some reason because a friend was going to get it for me and then he couldn't. So literally today I went out and checked out a little little bar and they had it. So I'm like, yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because you were saying that uh, you weren't sure if your friend was going to give it to you or if you were able to find it, but uh, yeah, it's all, all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good that the last bit ever worked. Yeah, I mean, I paid a bit more for it than probably a bit more than I should have done, but then it's from a bar, so I mm. can't expect that. Yeah, I bet. But yeah, good. It's okay. Uh, thank, it's thank, good. thank you for popping on, <laughs> for oh, so spending cool. the hard earned money on. Uh, on being here all right um and also another one who hasn't showed up in a while is mr chris of uh soon to be off the tenth. that is true that is very true uh listen i uh wanted to say i'm happy that ashley is number two today because he is the shit oh, i want to say he is the number two thank you yeah okay wow. speaking thanks i love you Thanks. All right. All right. And of course, last but definitely least, we've got Greg. How are you? The beer burglar. How you know, you geez, Nick, for a, for a guy that had no friends last week and I'm the only one that showed up to support him, you certainly are being awfully mean to me tonight. So you just, you just sit in the corner and think about that all night. I agree with Greg, actually. Unbelievably so. All right, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Greg's always the punching bag just because it's fun. Anyway, uh, moving right along to the beer history that Joe won't care about, uh, we've got uh, the story of St. Bernardus. So, the story of St. Bernardus begins in the late 19th century. I gather around kids while I tell the story. During the rise of anti clericalism in, under the Third French Republic, the monks of Mondecats and the Catsburg Abbey community of uh, the Pas de Calais region of France, decided to leave the area uh, to safer ground and uh, cross the border in Belgium. Ultimately, they settled in the village of Watu in West Flanders, only a few kilometers away from their former home across the border. Uh, they transformed uh, a farm into the Refuge Notre Dame de Saint Bernard and became well known for their cheese factory. Uh, in 1934, with the attitude in France towards the monks improving, uh, the Abbey community decided to move their operations back to France, leaving control of the, uh, of the, of the cheesery or cheese factory to Everest de Conic, who continued to run the cheese factory. Uh, this cheese, St. Bernard Watu, is still produced today by Belgio Milk in Morslade. Following the end of the Second World War, the abbot of Abbey St. Sixtus you know, some people might know where I'm going with this. Um, a monastery lady located 13 kilometers away in nearby West Flederen that, did, that uh, dates back to 1831 decided that brewing their beer took up too much attention away from the monks' religious tasks and sought to outsource production. 
a partnership was reached with the St. Bernard Cheese Factory uh, to build a brewery. Uh, West Flutter and brewmaster Matthew Savinsky uh, became a partner in the brewery as well as brought over the original recipes and the St. Sixtus yeast strain. And the St. Bernardus Brewery was born. Uh, St. Bernardus brewed West Flutter and beers from 1946 to 1992 under various names such as Trappist West Flutter and St. Sixtus or just simply Sixtus. In 1992, as part of the growing sentiment among the monks that uh, true Trappist product must be made within Abbey walls, Abbey St. Sixtus uh, decided to move production of West Flutter and beers back to their Abbey, where it has been brewed on a smaller scale ever since, using a yeast strain obtained from fellow West Mall Abbey. Uh, this purist uh, movement resulted in the founding of the International Trappist Association with St. Sixtus and seven other abbeys throughout Belgium, France, and Germany. The St. Bernardus Brewery was allowed to continue producing the original West Flutter and recipes under their own name using the original West Flutter and yeast. So that's the big difference. It's the same recipe as the world famous West Flutter and 12, with the exception it's brewed with the original St. Sixus yeast instead of uh, the new one uses uh, West Mall yeast. Anyway, so uh, the beers from St. Bernardus include uh, the original four beers that they inherited from West Flutter and which are the Abbott 12, like we have here tonight, uh, the Prior 8 double, the Patter 6 double, another double. I don't know why they have two. Um, Extra 4, which is a Trappist single, which was uh, subsequently reintroduced in 2014. They've also added uh, to their lineup uh, St. Bernardus Triple, uh, Watu Triple. They have two triples. St. Bernardus Christmas Ale, which is a winter spice version of their Abbott 12. And of course, St. Bernardus Wit, which is a Belgian style wit beer created in collaboration with Peter Sel Pierre Sellis, founder of Hoogarden. Uh, St. Bernardus Abbott 12, tonight's beer obviously, is a 10% ABV Trappist style Abbott ale. Uh, very strong, dark ale, similar in style, but darker than a quad. Um, along with its uh, close cousin, uh, West Flutter and 12, St. Bernardus Abbott 12 is considered one of the best beers in the world and routinely appears on top-rated beer lists, including fourth overall quadruple on Beer Advocate and fourth overall quadruple slash Abbott Ale on Rate Beer. Yeah, so we are we stand in the midst of greatness and a, uh, a descendant or cousin of sorts to the famous West Flutter and 12. All right, so moving right along, let's get into, uh, do we have any comments, uh, first of all? I know Joe's kind of boycotting reading them and we're not letting Greg read it, so let's, uh, everybody... Uh, Ash, you want to read comments? Uh, fine. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, ring in your parade was Yo Dogs. What up? Uh, Eric Gilbert, uh, he's uh, watching us. Cheers, Eric. Uh, ring in your parade. He's got a uh, 750 mil bottle. Bring it oh, in yeah. this thing. Artist glass. Proper glassware. Proper uh, I can't glassware. remember what it cost. <laughs> Eric Gilbert, uh, no St. Bernard is here, just a year-old Green King festive pudding ale, and I recommend instead of drinking that, he should have drank something from Flying Monkeys. Isn't, doesn't Eric Gilbert usually have better beers than what we have? Because you usually have like a macro or some shitty beer, and he's like, oh, I'm drunk on this great beer, yet he somehow is drinking something worse than we're drinking from once, which is intriguing. I like that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Lee just chimed in. What is Joe doing here? I thought he retired. Yeah, I did like two months ago. I don't know. Got sucked into the vortex of beer analysis 101. It happens. I'm sure it's spelled similarly to uh, retired, but uh, it's not politically correct. Uh, anyway, uh, moving right along to the uh, see what grow with Joe. What's your history with St. Bernardus? Who the fuck knows? No, uh, my history with this beer. Um, it's one of the first uh, Belgian beers that I ever had. One of the first Belgian quads. I don't remember back like in the early 2010s. Um, the well, I guess we'll get into it in a little bit what what I'm actually drinking right now the the bottle itself but uh I've always put it up there with Roche for 10 um and until I had a vest letter in 12 with Greg courtesy of Aaron remember that Greg remember when he paid like 30 bucks mm, for the I bottle? remember it was a great beer but it was also crazy expensive uh I always put it up there with you know some of the best Belgian quads and it always reminds me of one of those beers that I, when I drink, I always say to myself, why don't I drink that more often? And then I go two years without drinking because I'm an idiot. Uh, but uh, it's delicious. Every time I've had it, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I definitely should buy the rest of their lineup and give them a review or at least, at the very least, just drink them. 
because this is a great brewery. So, uh, yeah, I've had it quite a few times, and I always dig it. So, right on. All right, moving along to uh, Mr. Ashley Sexton, which I'm sure has got a pretty damn cool story, as well as like Joe has, of uh, why he uh, has a big history with St. Bernardus, but I'm I'm not sure if he does or not. What's what's your story? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I totally like you, Dan. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. I, I've had this twice. Um, one time last year when it was, it was uh, I guess when it was in the six pack, and again like literally a few weeks ago when it was uh, about the same six pack. Uh, both years I forgot to tap it, so uh, this is like the third time I've had I'm having it for the first time because I honestly can't remember the previous two times. Nice. They, yeah, I probably had it after having a whole bunch of other things, so that, that tends to be my history with stuff like this. Nice. Yeah, sorry. No, no magical story for me. Oh. All right then. Uh Craig, what's your history with uh with uh St. Bernardus? Well, I've not, not had this one for almost four years. Um like, I mean since I've been using kind of untapped and stuff. Um prior to that I've had it well, I hate to think how many times in the sort of mid two thousands kind of time period. And when I was really kind of getting away from just general macro lager and stuff like that, um, at the end of the night, going down to my local Belgian bar where I bought this today. And yeah, I used to drink it quite regularly. It was one of my favorites uh, back then. And yeah, they put it up there with um, Rochefort 10 kind of thing. But yeah, we'll see how this one goes. Nice. I've not reviewed it yet, but I will do. Oh, certainly got a big enough. Well, I don't know what size bottle did you get? Did you get like a three thirty or did you get a, a full size? Yeah, a three thirty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say if you had the big one, then you would have left some left yeah. over for review. But <laughs> yeah, no, I'll just yeah. get another one in a second. All right, it's all good. Right on. All right, Chris, what's your history with what's with uh, with uh, Saint Bernardus? Never had it. I've never had this beer, and uh, I'll let you guys know when we're doing the actual, our own opinions on it, on uh, what I think of it. So I'm actually, uh, I'm not going to spoil it or anything like that, but I'll just be quiet and tell you that I've never had it. Thank you. Okay, then we'll we'll go with that. And uh, we'll go over to Greg, which I'm sure he's got several bottles of this uh, cellar aged in his parents' basement. You're muted. Huh, I can't see the mute button over my white wall. Um, nice. First of all, I think we should have some sort of a special song every time we get a beer virgin on here. So we'll work on that, uh, Nick. Uh, like second like of, the dance? Yeah, maybe we'll do some sort of virginity dance or something, you know, paint our faces red, like some, something like that. <clears throat> Drinking for uh, the very first time. Well, the thing is, my memory doesn't exist past uh, <laughs> November something 2014. I just lost the page. But anyway, that's because that's when I started my untapped account and untapped 500 beers in one night. And I thought I was a crazy alcoholic. Um, so I don't know. I think I had it once before then. So I'd, let's say pretty much I've had this at least one since 2013. And usually I have multiple bottles every year. These usually don't make it to cellaring because I've always found that this beer is a little bit better fresh. Might be a slight spoilers because... I'm, I've got a 16 and an 18, or at least I think it's an 18 uh, in front of me right now. Uh, I've always kind of liked this beer fresh, so my bottles usually don't last more than a few months. But I usually buy at least a few bottles of this every year. If I can get it, as you know, I don't like to be inconvenient. So if it's not a, an LCBO I can get too easily, I likely won't make the extra two-kilometer trip to get it. Uh, not that it's bad. I'm just lazy. Um, but the thing that always is convenient for me to get is the St. Bernard six pack. So I usually buy one or two of those every Christmas and that includes this and five other very tasty treats for the holidays. How nice. Nice. So yeah, I've had this a few times, but it never, never makes it the cellaring age. I would have thought that'd be like, maybe the big bottles would be something. You'd I do think the most I've ever oh. cellar aged one is two years or so. And I think, it, I think I kind of realized that I'm sort of a, I like I like this beer fresh better. But that's it. Have you ever aged one? As in, of course, the 2016 bottle that you got now. No, I think I've like I think I've I've had ones that were two years old before. Oh, okay. Like like a couple of years ago, I bought like four or five of them, and I kept one of them for two years, and 
compared, I think, to the two-year-old Rochford, and eh, was what it was. Nice. All right, so the, the next part of it, of course, is my end of the story. I'm not sure, I can't remember what I gave it for a rating out of my, my, my review, but I did it for episode 700 uh, with a bottle that uh, I believe Sith had grabbed. Uh, my buddy Sean, uh, uh, we so it was back in 2014 that I first time that I ever had a St. Bernardus Abbott 12, although I had a, a St. Bernardus beer before that. I had the Wit beer back in 2013. And I think what happened was that Sith had brought home the uh, the, the the six pack, the sampler six pack from a trip to either the states or Ontario, and uh, of course we we drank those over time, and half of them got stored away near his heater. That was the time that uh, the we we did the Paterate review that got banned. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so my history with uh, St. Bernardus is that I've had this numerous times over the years. Um, uh, ever since uh, 2014, I did, there was one point where the Tasters Pack showed up here, I think, in 2015. I also partook in a little uh, mail, like a mail order pack where a bunch of us in our beer, local beer league got together and ordered a, a case or two of the Abbott 12 and the 750 mil bottles um from uh from ontario i think the mb liquor brought them in in from ontario as long as we ordered by the case so i've got like three i had like three bottles and i still still think i got two of them that are aging from like 2015. And this one turns out i bought it last christmas but it turns out it's a 2016 bottle too so yeah it's pretty pretty solid i've, I've always i've always liked it but uh I won't spoil too much of my thoughts on this other than I've had it a few times and I've had St. Bernardus beers a few times and generally enjoyed them quite a bit. I've also had, I should add, uh, with all the talk of West Flutter and 12, I've had West Flutter and 12. That was famously my uh, episode number, I think, 500 uh, and uh, also 1,000. So right on. Um, yeah, speaking of, before we get over to the comments to see if there's re any more over there, um does uh what what is the age of everybody's bottle so we can just uh get that out in writing i know mine's a 2016 what was yours again joe uh mine was december 2nd of um 2016 so right around two years old almost to the day okay i think mine's like five months older than yours dash uh mine the the best before I, I i can't tell the month and day uh the year's 22 so 2017. the last year's okay yeah. and uh craig yeah, um, 9th of September of 2017, uh, I guess. But usually five the stamp on the back is uh, the best before best before date. It's five years before. out. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to red beard anybody here, but um, Craig, did you get a new camera or something? Because it's no longer yellow and it's like a vibrant, like normal color. Yeah, it's very good, very good quality now. It looks, it looks a lot better. Yeah, I didn't little, recognize them. Yeah. I've got a little camera. I'm not under a sunbed anymore. It's the same lights, but you know. Like you used to look like an old LucasArts adventure game, and now oh, you look like you fixed. Now yeah. you look like yeah. you're in the HD era. Yeah, no, it's yeah. No. It's, a lot better, yeah, Craig. It's, it's no good. So. My bottle's the same age as Ash. <clears throat> well, here's the interesting thing. So I've got two of them in front so, of me. So, so one so. of them, if we're going by the five-year-old, sorry, Craig, did you answer? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Did you? No, answer? no, no, I cut, I cut you off. You're, you're, okay, no, no worries. I didn't I, want to. I, I, I just read bad to you. Sorry about that. No, no, no we're, oh, we're good. Oh, we're oh, friends. Anybody got well, steamrollers? Steam see, up, up until up until a few seconds ago, I thought I had a 16 and an 18 bottle. However, if we're going by the five-year-old, this one expires in 20, and this one expires 22. So that means this bottle is a 15, which would make it three years old. And this bottle is a 17 because it expires in 22. So now, but the thing is, this one that supposedly is a 17, I just pulled out of a brand new pack that I just bought at the LCBO a few days ago. And this one I pulled out of a 16 pack. So is St. Bernardus aging it for a year before they release it? I don't know. Now, the LCBO is aging it for a year before they release yeah, it. Yeah, that's, 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 that's probably a year more, to get for it to cross accurate, the point, so. maybe. So it appears that maybe, I don't know, like to me, this tastes like every fresh bottle I've had of this, but I don't know, maybe it is a year and a half old and maybe it doesn't change that much in a year and a half. I don't know. 
Now, are we sure that it's five years uh, best before date? Yeah. Or is it four? Yeah, almost positive. Like I'm 99.9% positive Wait. it's five years. Really? All right. Uh, do we have any uh, more comments? Yes, we do. Uh, we have Ewart and a bunch of people who matter. That's about it. Uh, all right. We will uh, go with the ones that matter. We'll uh, skip over Ewart. Uh, That's what I would do. That's what his wife does. Oh, let's see here. Uh, Eric Gilbert said the festive pudding is way fucking better age, but still boring. Um, Matt from Massive Beer Reviews, uh, he's chiming in. One of, if not my favorite quads. Donut points. What? Donut points that for almost a decade there, the pressure build up in the 750s equates to playing Russian roulette with your eyeball. Yeah. Opening <laughs> He said, he said, yeah, as you age it, yeah. And so, and then, actually, that would be fun. I open it. And then uh, Randy on your trade was wondering where the date was. Chris answered because he's paying attention. Uh, Lee, uh, everyone is a BD deadbeat. BDU is dead. Um, he's probably right. That was a reference to a, a comment that you were made that was, you know, Oh, no sense. Yeah. yeah, it made no See, sense. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just skipping over you. Or yeah, because it's it's you do that because he doesn't yeah. matter. You really can't judge things though by Joe. He's kind of a deadbeat. No, I am, but not Even as much we, as you were. Mm. Well, no, no one's bad as you were. That's just the way it is. Eric didn't grab any AB, uh, Abbott twelve lately. Order up Boulevard and British Alchemist through the SDBO with that money. There we go. There we That's go. What we got. Well. No, I've got the uh, the uh, Boulevard Quad, um, the sixth glass or whatever yeah. it is. That's a good beer. I, mean, I have to drink that at some point. Well, well how old sure. is it at this point? I, oh, I just it. bought it like three months ago. Oh, okay. And you didn't get it at the LCBO because obviously you're in New Brunswick, so they didn't age it for four years for you. Hey, look, the last message here is from uh, is uh, saying uh, show or hide on last comment from Tech and Mary saying hide oh, it. You, fuck you, Ash. I'm gonna hide it. Yeah, you were. You were Tewart. You were being Tewart. We all we all know angry. what that means. Stop no, being so angry, you were. I'm not a troll. He's, he's uh, rude even by my standards. He's bringing out his Murray persona. Murray, which is he's worse trolling, than his trolling from trolling from space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually I've watched a couple of them. Uh, the the after shows with him and his great uh, microphone. That was a lot of fun. That was a good time. It's the best. Yeah. He's so out to lunch. He has no idea what's happening. It's great. Speaking of to lunch, are we ready to give our final thoughts? Yeah. I forgot how this works. <laughs> <laughs> right, Nick, Nick would you please explain it, please? Do we rate it? Just stop. No, I know. I know he's just trolling. Just get. Am I, get I'm first. Get over with it. Ready, ready for stylistic rating and regular rating and mm -hmm. final thoughts. All right. Uh, honestly, we did Roche for ten. I think we did in August, and. Uh, I always thought I enjoyed that more than this, and I'm, I still might in general. But this bottle, it's two years old, and it's amazing. I don't know what it is about this beer right now, but I'm digging every single second of it. it has like this nice candied fruit, like fig, raisin, dark cherry thing going on. Um, super smooth, pretty much can't detect the alcohol. I don't remember remembering it being this good fresh. I know Greg will, you know, counterpoint that with he thinks it's better fresh and teach their own, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, for me, this is drinking extremely well. I don't remember when I gave the Roche for 10. I'd probably say I, I gave it a 9 out of 10 for style and probably overall rating. Um, I'm going to give this stylistically probably 9.5 in personal enjoyment the same rating because uh, this is fucking delicious right now. I'm enjoying every second of it. Um, I still think Westy 12, I don't say Westy 12 is better. It's probably just as good. But the fact that I pay like a fourth of the price to get a bottle and I can actually get a bottle whenever I want is nice. But uh, what I'm drinking right now is fantastic. And for anybody out there who's never had this, like you need to get it at some point and try it along with Roche for 10 to try to get to, you know, try to try out the OG quads. I feel that you owe it to yourself if you're into craft beer to give these a go at some point. So that's all I got. Cool. Right on. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ash. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I don't have a, an extensive history with Belgian quads, um, you know, outside of, you know, Rochefort 10 and uh, the few times I've had this. Um, but I mean, well, th there's nothing to not like about this beer, to be honest. It's, uh, it's so beautifully balanced uh, from 
the first sip of the glass down to the last sip, every time you go to it, you, you, you get different flavors. There, there's, there's so many different layers to this. Um, like when I first took a, a whiff, I was getting some like, you know, just like tons and dates and stuff like that. And then as it got down to the bottom of the glass and it warmed up, then I was picking up like candied berries, like a, like more of a sweeter end. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just such a really nice beer to be completely honest. Um, as it warms, you get a, a little bit of, uh, like an astringency, a little burn, but not, not a whole lot. I'm sure that would sort of mellow it out, uh, mellow it out as, it, as it ages. Cause again, this is just a year old. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is a great, great beer, super dangerous. I'm wondering how I'm going to feel after I drink this whole damn bottle. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm going to go nine two five for both uh, personal enjoyment and uh, for style. I mean, for style, I'm, I'm a little noob at it, so I, I don't really know what other Belgian quads are like. But uh, and 925 for uh, style and 925 for personal enjoyment. What I got. Very nice. All right, and uh, Craig. Just what a beer. I mean, this is fresh, so fairly fresh. It's just awesome. Um, the, the, as as Ash was saying, it's, it's it's really complex. It's got a lot of kind of almost like every mouth, you know, before you get of it, it's kind of you get you're picking up something else. This I'm picking up like there's a slight hint of kind of a, a candied well, can I, not there is, but a candied like banana note to it. Um, the dark fruits are just like going here, there, and everywhere, but it's so smooth. And you know, for the ABV, it's I was expecting a little bit more kind of of, of that, especially it being a fairly new bottle. Um, and and it, to be honest with you, it's not. I've, I've had some, I've had other Belgian beers before that have got more alcohol content than I'm getting out of this fresh bottle, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a classic. Of course, we all know that, and I don't know why I've taken like nearly four years to have a bottle of it again, kind of thing. Um, it's difficult to judge this against the um, Wash Vault 10, I'd say. Just like you need to have them side by side to actually get a full kind of picture of, of, of that story. But yeah, they're both good beers, of course. So, but um, I'd say on a par, this is a 9 5 on both style and enjoyment on this one. It's just, uh, it's just superb. Dangerous beer. Not much else you can say about it, really. But yeah, damn good. Very nice. Are you ready to bring this down? Yeah. Uh, you know, you're gonna gonna fucking fuck ruin it for everybody, aren't you, uh, Chris? Yep, yeah, we are. I look back at my own. We knew that. We knew. We knew this was coming. Uh, um, I checked my own tap. I checked my own tap on Rock Roof of Ten. I gave it a three out of five or six out of ten and i'll tell you i'm not a fan of the belgian quads uh I'm telling you right now this is for the noob right here i mean i'm getting all those flavors everyone's talking about the dates the raisins the the fucking bitterness the fucking uh i don't know for me it's, it's something that i don't enjoy in the taste basically that's basically what it is um there's no alcohol burn or anything like that even at ten percent there's it's it's drinkable. I'm not. I'm not gonna go fucking throw this down the sink or anything like that. I will drink this. However, it is not my cup of tea, as some would say. But for my ratings and stuff like that on this one, for style, it is what it is. I'm gonna give it a nice high score for style. It is a Belgian quad, and it's well done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten for style. Overall, though, I'm gonna have to give this one same as the roast for ten. I'm gonna give it a, a fucking six out of ten. Uh, Sorry, I had to bring it down. It's just not my thing. My bad. But I mean, anyway, that's that's, a, that's my own opinion. It's fair. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that. That's a great thing about this, though. We all have our own, yeah. own opinions. Also, uh, Chris is banned from any of these uh, going forwards. So. <laughs> all right, thanks for having me. I agree with that. Fuck you, Chris. I don't know if banning's strong enough. Can we kill him? <laughs> <laughs> you are the beer burglar. You tell us. The... Yeah, we can kill him. <clears throat> So moving right along to somebody who's going to bring things back up, Greg. I always like to bring things back up. So oh, 
Two things oh, before right. I start. Number one, Joe, you paid less. You paid more for this beer than you did Westy 12 because you didn't pay for the Westy 12. Mr. Aaron Duchette bought your beer for you. Correct. And thank you to Aaron. And you should also thank Aaron, even though he'll never watch this. I do, I do thank Aaron because both you and I are way too cheap Polacks to be able to ever buy that beer ourselves. And we, uh, But he bought it for us. How nice of him. So thank That's you, true. Mr. Duchette. So I'll start with a couple things. Uh, first of all, fuck you, Chris. Second of all, um, so of the big three, you know, you got the big three, the Westy 12, the St. Bernardus, and the Rashford. You got the Chimay, you got the whatever the other one, the Blue Cap, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, no, Chimay Blue, uh, West Mall, that's the other one I was thinking oh, of. Oh, West sorry. Mall, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, ter- I'm terrible. If you Watch Lee's last podcast, you'll see how terrible I am with names. Um, anyway, so... Of the sort of big three, I've always – this has sort of always been the middle one for me. It's been to me the best one that I can actually get because I've never really been able to get the West D12. I've tried it once. Uh, I thought West D12 was absolutely phenomenal. I thought it was the best Belgian quad I've had by a mile. But I also don't know if that was just a Goldilocks bottle or if it was just, again, my cheap Polish gene just kind of kicked in and was like, this is free. This is the best beer ever. Um, but – Going by memory, it was the best by a good margin. And then I like this, and then I think Rushford 10 is sort of the, the – still excellent, but the least of the three. And then you got the other ones. Um, so I'm going to give a quick rating of the 2000 – and what I thought was 2016, but apparently might be a 2015. So I'll give a quick rating of this, but Chris, don't write this down. This is not my original score. But this one, pick, this one picks up a little bit more chocolate. A uh, little bit more sweetness, kind of that candy sugar thing. It does not pick up banana, which I do get from a lot of aged Belgian beers. So that's kind of strange. I get maybe a hint of it, but I, that's probably me just trying to find it. So, I mean, it's super smooth. Like, I mean, I could drink I could drink this like a freaking 5% beer. There's no carbonation to it. Like, I could just jam this down my throat and then probably die of alcohol poisoning, which some of you, Nick, would probably celebrate. But it's, not, but it's not going to happen tonight. Okay. Anyway, if I were to rate this beer, it's a little bit worse than a, uh, a, fresh, a fresh-ish one. Um, I, I'd go with a 9 and 9. So, I mean, it's still a great beer. But it is a little worse, spoilers, than a fresh one. Now I'm going to give my rating on the fresh one, which is the one we're actually going to count. This is very different. It's got quite a bit of carbonation to it. I get a lot of the dark fruit, which seems to disappear on the older bottles. You know, it's kind of a, like a grapey, vinous taste. Um, don't get much in the way of chocolate, which is good. I don't particularly like the taste of chocolate in my beers. Um, and it, it, it's not quite as smooth. It actually makes you feel like you're actually drinking a high ABV beer, which might be good for some people. It might be less likely to have alcohol poisoning. But for me, this is really just an excellent, excellent beer. And... Honestly, I'd probably give this a 10 if I hadn't had the Westy 12, but now I kind of feel like I can't quite give it a 10 because it's not quite up there anymore. Um, and I will say this is my second favorite St. Bernard's product. I do prefer the Christmas Ale, but this one's still pretty high up there. Uh, so I'm going 9595 for both of them. It's excellent all around. It's one of my favorite beers, and I'm very happy to buy it all year round. And as a bonus, again... Polish jean kicking in. It's pretty cheap to buy. It's like ten bucks a bottle for seven fifty, or I, can, I get it as part of the, wow. uh, the the six pack, which I think is reasonably priced as well. So, you know what? That's cheap. Frost. It's a great beer all around. Hmm. Cheers, That's mofos. A good price. That's a good price. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess all that's left is me now to to keep bringing it down like no, I'm not going to bring it down like Chris said. <laughs> I feel like though um, putting a uh, putting a year age on this probably didn't probably didn't do it as great as I thought because when I first started drinking this, I thought it was a bit muted uh, in comparison to what it tastes like when it's fresh. Because when it's fresh, it's uh, it's very it's a bit it's a bit sweeter, a bit more punchy because of the uh, the added confectionery sugar because they they uh, they spike it with a little bit of sugar and and, and yeast to uh, to allow it to. Uh, 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 for for secondary fermentation, so it actually has a uh, um, gives it a bit more shelf life that way. But uh, over after a year, it's mellowed out quite a bit. Um, but I think maybe what I was doing is I was drinking this a little bit too cold, and now as it's been warming up, I'm getting more and more of the complex flavors in the the, the spices, the 
the uh the more of the chocolates the dried fruits uh raisins figs uh there's still a little touch of confectionery sugar there there's almost like maybe a little bit of touch of roast coffee buried within it it's a nice effervescent body but it's a little coarse and perhaps i'm going by a very rough image of this majestic beer that i had five years ago uh in the four or five, six years ago now geez almost six of the original west flutter in 12 which was like i described at the time as an angels dancing on my tongue i don't get the angels part in this beer but i could see where the recipe is similar and i almost see at the same time like maybe that's where the difference between the two yeast are it's like the bubbles are finer or something or the uh um there's a little bit hint more banana in the west flutter in 12 than there is in this it just kind of makes things stand out a whole lot more um than the west the, the st bernard's 12 does but don't get me wrong this is an an amazing amazing beer um and i do highly recommend it and i do highly recommend actually getting a couple bottles of this and aging it for a while um because uh right now getting to where it is nice and Nice and temporary right now. This is actually uh <laughs> shut up, Joe. <laughs> Getting to where it is right now, it's actually a very nice, amazing beer. And uh I, I really, really enjoy this. Gonna give this uh nines on both counts. It's nine first for us uh, for a quad, nines uh for uh for, for this for the overall for this for so style overall nines and nine. Now, one thing I will say is that I can't remember what I gave for rating on the Rochefort 10, but I kind of like maybe Rochefort 10 a hair more um, than this. And at the same time, I feel like Rochefort 10, I think, is more of a quad style. It's a little lighter than this is, whereas this is uh, Abbott, uh, where it's a little a little darker. But uh, I'd have to, have to maybe go back and do my homework and see. But I just remember my overall impression of Rochefort uh, 10 when we had it as being a bit higher. I think I think I gave it a, a 10 out of uh, overall on that one anyway. But uh, overall, I'm glad we got, actually got a chance to try St. Bernard's 12 because this is actually a quite fantastic beers and, of course, a, a world classic that uh, I recommend anybody uh, who likes beer at all try at least once in their life. All right, so while I crunch the numbers, do we have any more uh, more comments? Yeah, give me a second. I'll uh, scroll up and ignore him. <laughs> I just I just want to point out and humiliate Nick that I angels dancing on your tongue. I don't believe you gave that beer a five out of five, did you, Nick? No, I didn't. I never give a beer a five out of five. So, I gave so it four. A angels yeah. dancing on your tongue is not a five out of five. What would you describe a five out of five beer, Nick? He do, he doesn't know because he never gave one. <laughs> Drinking a West Flutter in twelve. While simultaneously having an orgasm with the most beautiful woman in the world, uh, <laughs> while you're on a beat, anyway, I'm not, we're getting we're graphic done. here. Nick, we're done. All right, going on we're to done. the. <laughs> well, now the audience is picturing that. No, no, while, no, while she's yeah. having one too. Anyway, wow, oh, we just lost Ooh. five viewers. Apparently, we weren't well, professional. Oh, well, you okay. asked. You asked for it. I beer's did. not the only thing that's right. All right, so you were it's like. Oh, I put a nice comment in and I actually skipped over it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's exactly how you Here would say it. Here is a quote from Ewart. I love this beer. I really should stock up. See, that's a that's actually a comment from Ewart worth for me. Yeah. Nah, not really. Wish. No one really cares. See, the thing it's is, like, Ewart probably has fun. like it's three really dozen available. of these beers and he just doesn't want to no. join us. So, F you, Ewart. Not rare enough for Ewart. Never will be. So, there you go, Ewart. Satellite's sat, sat down, probably. I don't know. I think he's confusing this beer with cant cant cantaloons. All the loons. Yeah. You say Indeed. cantaloons. Yeah, on purpose, Nick. Jesus Christ, man. Can cantalo Cantalonia. It's cantaloons, oh. Nick. It's not cantaloon, all right? It's cantaloons. Loons. Cantalon. Loons. Jesus. Indeed. So there's some back and forth banter between uh, uh, Teku Murray and Eric Gilbert. Uh, Jamie comes up with the uh, solution that I actually am raining on your parade, so that's another person to add to the list of my uh, secret identities. Um, Likely raining... true. Entity. Entities. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, titties. Raining on your parade, he does prefer Abbott 12 to Rushworth 10. No date on the cork, where is it? And again, Chris to the rescue. 
Uh, well, he found it eventually, and we'll get to it in a minute. But good. But he doesn't. Um, he still doesn't know how old it is, though. So we'll that's into that one. Yeah, that's three years old. Uh, for Eric, uh, this beer is right up there with Westy Eight. Um, right what? Twenty one eleven twenty. Is that the expiring? Yes, it is, sir. So you. Have, uh, November 21st of 2015, which makes it over three years old, Rainy Air Green. And uh, you know what? Um, you're it is wondering what's wrong with Nick's camera. Everyone else is maximized. Nick has a weird frame or footer. What yeah. up, dog? Yeah, Nick's showing at 720, so 1080. Okay. Is it really? Fucking. Because Nick is us. in widescreen. Do you say 720? More like 420. Oh, oh shit. Oh, no. tripping out. He's doing yeah. the angel dust. He's tripping balls. balls. The angel dust from the actual angels brought him angel dust. And oh, not God. Right on his tongue. Dancing. That kind of angel dust. dust on on the tongue. Tongue. Like, I don't think I'll then Jesus Eric, got, he got straight to the point, Eric. He's like, just kick him off the panel. And then, um, yeah, just cool. kick him right out Chris? of the panel. Chris, I'm not a fan Chris. of the squads, man. Fuck. Yeah, no way. And that's okay, Chris, except for when it's not, which is right now. Yeah. Radio yeah. Newport is Radio enjoying this. Right now. This is not going to beat MGD. I'm just fucking going to throw Holy shit. Right I, can't, I can't comprehend <laughs> that. My mind's broken. If this is you can't the, change your vote. You can't change your vote either. So <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, that, that's. <laughs> Just that webcam thing. I'm not sure why it's doing that. That is fucked up. I will Nick. eat this cork if this does not beat uh, fucking edgy. Yo, you better get in. You better well, I'm changing it my rating to a six then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, negative three. We're good to go, boys. Rating on your crates and it's warming up so nicely like a true Belgian beer. Wait, uh, he watches Paul's reviews. What are you warming up nicely? Yeah. What? Yeah. It's, 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 mouth. it's so hot. Yeah, it's, it's, a bit thin. it's a bit thin. Yeah, it's just a bit. And, uh, that that's pretty much it. Uh, again, just just some more your banter, and that's about it. Oh. Hmm. We, we 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 do say he he does fill up the chat quite well. <laughs> about the right, right, use right, of you. Right. Okay, so now we uh, we go back to uh, Panavision here to uh, present the scores for tonight's beer, which Holy of course it, it is of course Chris's fault that uh, Paper and Our Sabbath Twelve didn't score nines on both sides. It's all right. We'll never forgive him. No. Thanks, Chris. I'll be hearing about this for the next three minutes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep underestimating how long this show can go on. If for. anyone in the Nag region sees a blue BRZ, yeah. key the fuck out of it. Yeah, because just like the <laughs> last girl you had sex with, she'll forget in three minutes. <laughs> oh, it's wow. wow. I thought oh, at some point so this was classy. I was mistaken. Okay, no, guys, but... we're virgin shaming now. That's rude. Let's be nice. <laughs> Uh, is this the highest? Uh, what's 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 been the highest overall? Um, a beer has. Been? Uh, was, was, no, I don't this has got to be up there, right? CBS. Nick, 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 make a I, don't think was, I don't think CBS got that high. It Can you a Google goals. spreadsheet and like maybe just find yeah? We maybe we should really start keeping. Rushford Rush like twelve 50. did really well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Rush for ten probably. Did, uh, did you just get yeah, rush for twelve? Yeah. Did you yeah, get rush? Sorry, sorry. Again, I'm, I'm <laughs> that How much have you had to drink, Greg? <laughs> well, I've had two. I've had two. Uh, St. Bernard's 14s, apparently. Well, well, that's that's the that was the <laughs> question. I was Actually, I have the let me bring up the Rocheford here and see if I can compare that's it. The, the Rocheford, all right. So, the so I do have it. like the six and the eight mixed I, together. I do have the ratings for the Rocheford 10. Oh, I brought it down too. That's the best part. So, the Rocheford, the Rocheford 12. The Rochefort 12 got a uh, zero and zero because it doesn't exist. But the Rochefort 10, stylistically 9.39 and overall 9.06. Oh, so Chris didn't bring it down as much. Yeah, which is amazing. Without his shitty scores, it probably would have been like nine and a half all around. Who checked the event? Yeah, Rochefort 10 scored higher. Okay, that's, that's kind no of what one, I, Yeah, I can't be bothered to look on GD up because if his score is higher I'm than I'm looking for right now, we just need to stop this forever. There it is. MG, the final yeah, you know me. I will say though, like looking back, I I do prefer this, the the for ten based on the two bottles I had of the beer analysis one on ones that we did. Um, I don't know if that's the case at all times. I'm starting to get like a very distinct cherry cola vibe from this one, which I enjoy. I don't know, like like a very I don't I don't know what's happening, but as it sits and warms up, raining iron printers, it fucking warms up. It's boiling now. No, uh. It's just it's coming out a little bit more. I think the one thing, and, and you mentioned it, um, you mentioned it, Nick. I think fresh just is a bit more spicy from the yeast character for me. And now with yeah. a couple of years on it, it's kind of died out a little bit more. The confectionery, bolder, dark fruits come to the mm -hmm. forefront, which I personally enjoy. 
But it also might be batch variation too, because I've had aged bottles of this similar vintage before. Like, but as I said, I aged a couple of, uh, I had three bottles of uh, West of, of Abbott 12 that I aged, and I had one last year, and I remember it being a slightly better than this. It just had more punch to it. Oh, the one in the bottle, I, I, I wish I had the. Oh. I, oh, I wish I had the rest of uh, I wish I had the rest of Chris's bowl. Yeah, me too. Yeah, there's nothing left. I'll drink almost 400 calories. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. I, I just went and checked the MGD scores. <laughs> oh, please don't. This is terrible. The MGD, <laughs> the MGD, the MGD uh, style got 9.25, and overall was 7.63. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I thought it, I thought it did higher than that. That's why people don't do beer reviews to style. Am I right? Maybe not. I don't know. A lot of people do. Uh, yeah, but overall, it's seven points. We say seven point six three. That's yeah, that pales in comparison to a lot of the beers we've done on here. So, Kyle, am I right? Oops, sorry. Whoa, whoa. Let's not get too. <laughs> Joe. Let's not get too Joe. Joe. Never a great thing. Two Joes is better than one Joe in a year. So that's because. Oh days. my God. Jesus. That's a lot. All right, Nick. So what's the beer for next week? Oh, what is the next beer? Uh, what is beer's next? Uh, I'll bring booze. Damn it. You know, Angel stole that. He got his tongue. Take two. <laughs> I'm like, man, for you know, for a ten percent beer, it really drinks deceptively easy. I gotta say that. Oh, it's like, what oh, is oh, next week's does. beer? <clears throat> We're gonna stick with uh, Booze Sember theme. Booze-ember. We're gonna have uh, Amsterdam's Tempest and Beer. Yeah. State. Ontario beer. Greg, can you Virgin, and no bring a barrel aged tempest either. Don't even fucking think about it, Greg. I know your plans. Oh, I don't like on, it. Joe, let me. No double tempest. I mean, you can have a double tempest with it, but our well, aged bottle is a lot. Double tempest before I start. Uh, I will allow an aged bottle if that's all you have. So. I can come if there's an aged bottle. If not, then yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yes, fine. Joe. Go ahead. I don't want to. I mean, it's going to be weird. I have a 13 and a 14. That's not going to be. All that good in comparison, I don't think. All right, I'll drink it. Probably going to be. Better. I have a thirteen uh, yeah. as well, and I'll drink it with you. All right, now I'll drink right. thirteen. Thirteen was a fantastic year for it, and I think fourteen was the last year they did before they discontinued it for a few years. Mm. Did they All really right, so discontinue it? That's why I like. I've had they did. Uh, I can't remember if it was. I thought I had it after Fifteen that. was the last year they did, and then they skipped out for two or three years, and then this is the first year they brought it back, which is why they put it in their pack. Because it's like, hey, you want Tempest Kids? It's exciting. You got to buy our other beers, too, in the flight pack. Hey, Nick, why don't you, why don't you give the audience a little bit of a, a heads up and a little bit of a preview of what's going on with Don's choice, okay? Oh, yeah, I suppose. Um, we, we don't know if it's going to be – I'm hoping he'll be here. But um, on what December, is, what's, what's Don's choice? Tell me, tell me, what is it? <laughs> I didn't grab the bottle. I can't show. I'll, I'll, right I'll, show. Oh, I'll give more. God. All right, fine. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Chris is holding, Chris is co- currently holding up this new uh, neat beer uh, called Don's Choice from Medicine Gun that a Canadian uh, um, uh, a resident of New Brunswick actually. Um, he won I, thought, the, uh, I thought it was just an angry looking gi. I think we need to let, let let Nick don't talk. You're not allowed. You're terrible right now. Um, <laughs> he's, he's hammered. He's hammered. He's drinking too much. Oh, no, I'm definitely ah, hammered. You didn't even Let's say. Go. You have to say he was a former. Be- well, yeah, I guess a current okay, beer tuber. I'm, beer tuber. I'm, All right. Okay. So <laughs> let me finish. All right. So. All right, so Don, if you've been paying attention to uh, Don's choices, there was um, a Canadian contest uh, last year where uh, a lot of people uh, voted for the best idea for a new beer from Innocent Gun. My buddy Don from Grand Bay, otherwise known as Don Rig 13 Beer Reviews from Grand Bay, New Brunswick, actually won with his choice of, uh, of, uh, of a rhubarb coconut IPA, black IPA. So I'm getting... Uh, the hope is I'm going to get Don on the show next uh, on the 14th. I was speaking with uh, Don by messenger today, and uh, seems like so far it's a go that he's going to come on the show. But we're going to do a special episode because he can only make it on a Friday. Uh, on December 14th, we're going to do Don's Choice as a beer analysis 101 with Don of Don's Choice. Also, you can so find he's like him a celebrity. Don Rig thirteen here on 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 YouTube. He is a beer tuber, as yeah. Nick neglected to Good mention. Up. I said that. I said he's a beer tuber from Don, Grand Bay, New Brunswick. Don Rig's beer. Don Rig thirteen's beer reviews. You just don't even. Yeah. yeah, so that's coming up. So that's going to be awesome. And hopefully yeah. you can join. I'll us. I'll probably have more details next week when we're closer to the date. But uh, I know I've got my bottle. Greg has his bottle. Chris has mm. his bottle sitting right there in front of us. 
I'm going to take you off presentation. I'll be honest. Yeah. He, he always struck me as just an angrier looking gi. Like they kind of look like the same person, don't oh, they? Oh, jeez. Don's back when Don's he, a, back when back when Don. he used to have a beard. To be fair. Well, uh, well, geez, even when Guy had a beard, Don's beard was amazing. You know, nothing amazing. like prejudging people, Greg. I, yeah, I, I, exactly. I see where you're going. I mean, <laughs> not, I mean, of course, I love All Guy books must be judged by their covers. One thing Don makes you can understand is him as long as you understand Grand Bay Fisherman. And uh, uh, Don Rig 13 is one of the I nicest know. guys I know. So I, I, I got to put it out that he's a, he's a great guy. So basically, and, Nick is saying that Guy is a fucking asshole. No, and maybe in comparison. Whoa! Just can we shut this down, please? All right. So this is going on. Good night, everybody. Gee, Don, yeah. forget everything that Nick just said. He's hammered. Leave him alone. Yeah, yeah. Nick is really hammered. Well, that, you know, I haven't finished my beer yet. Yeah, neither have I. I'm gonna go Shit. get some angel dust. Yeah. Now bring me some too. I'm down. Can I? Can right, I? Can I just say that before we head out, uh, that we've had a lot of fun tonight. But you know what? Don't ever key somebody's car, even what I said. If you hate somebody, punch them in the face. Don't <laughs> key their car. Greg has a white Camaro in Toronto, so if you see No, me. no, I definitely do not have a white Camaro. Do not ever key a white Camaro. No, don't key any car. If you have a problem with somebody, punch them in the face. No. Don't ever key somebody's car. That's cowardly. I was joking, and I apologize, Chris. I hope your key car doesn't get keyed because it's a very nice-looking car. So – don't do don't do that. Don't be like that. Punch people in the face. Solve your uh, problems yeah, that way, like I, men I think do. I think it's high time we <laughs> don't start on the uh, the post analysis side of things and shut it down. And always remember these words: yeah. "You were a piece All of right, shit." We're, we're going offline. We're going to come back online shortly. And uh, thank everybody for watching. Penis ash. Penis. Penis.